Hello everyone, welcome to Sunday's lesson for July 2nd, 2023. My name is Ryan Phipps. Thank you for taking time out of your life to watch this. Let's get into our lesson for today. We live in a world that in many ways is brighter and more hopeful than it's ever been before. We've made huge strides in things like technology, communication, medicine, etc. Heck, we're even going back to the moon soon. That is awesome. But for all of our achievements, we are still very much the same species that we've always been. In our opinions, in our judgments, in the ways that we cut ourselves off from others and then demonize one another, in the ways that we love with strings attached, or worse yet, we use love as a means to control. With things like this and many more, these inner things, if you will, we are still the same as we've always been. And that can make one feel uneasy in this life, maybe even scared or hopeless. And today, I would like to impart some hope there in those spots. What I want to propose today is not quick, it's not easy, it won't fix the world overnight, and truthfully, should we choose to accept the hope, we'll spend the rest of our lives trying to live into it. The promise though, is that as we embrace this hope, we slowly, steadily start to become it. Our passage for today from the book of Proverbs is a short one, but it is profound and it speaks of this hope. It reads, the human spirit is the lamp of the Lord. Let me read that again. The human spirit is the lamp of the Lord. What does that mean? It sounds like beautiful poetry, but poetry that we can't quite understand, right? I think what this passage, this saying, is trying to do is to remind us of who and what we really are. Digging through all of the layers of our lives, the stuff that we own or where we live or what we drive or who our friends are or what we wear, etc. What are you really? What am I really? What are we? We creatures of such staggering contradictions. The passage tells us we are lamps. We are lamps of the Lord. That's what God says. Lamp, of course, when this was written way back then, is referring to an oil lamp. But it's okay if you want to think of it as a modern desk lamp or a lamp that sits on a table beside your couch in your living room. That is what you are. That's what everyone is. We are lamps. We are lights. And the work of the spiritual life is to warm up to this idea that it might just be true. At our core, this is who we really are. We each carry around in us a portion of light. There's a writer who I have enjoyed for years by the name of Eknath Ishran. He's no longer living now. But in one of his writings, he talks about this hope in a story from his childhood. This is what he writes. In the spring, people from all over my former state of Kerala celebrate one of our great festivals, Vishu, our new year. My mother, who lived with me in California for 10 years, was very particular about observing these immemorial customs, and my niece, Mira, now carries them on. So this year again, just as I used to do when I was growing up, I allowed myself to be led before dawn to Mira's little altar 
with my eyes closed, repeating my mantra. Little lamp, my grandmother used to ask, would you like to see the Lord? Yes, granny, I would reply. Then open your eyes, she said. And there in front of me would be a mirror wreathed in flowers, reflecting my own face. In that atmosphere of intense devotion, when each member of the family sees himself or herself reflected in the mirror, one of the greatest messages in the Hindu tradition is conveyed much more vividly than words can. Behind the face you are looking at is the Lord of love. As Nicholas of Cusa says, the face behind all faces. In the fever of our modern civilization, we too have forgotten this eternal truth, that by whatever name we call him, the Lord of love is always present in the depths of our consciousness. Nothing we do can displease him. And human life has one single purpose to discover this divine self. That's a beautiful story, isn't it? Though from a different tradition, each time I've read that story, I've always found myself thinking about the question that the Apostle Paul asks of the people in Corinth, where he writes, Do you not know that you are a temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? We are something other than we think we are. We are something other than the world of senses is trying to tell us we are. We are lamps. We are lights. Almighty God lives in each one of us. And so if that's all true, what are we to do with it then? Because if we are to take this to heart in the ways that we esteem ourselves and the ways that we esteem others, it puts us on the trajectory for a very different world. And no, in case you're wondering if I'm going here, doing this does not require that someone adopt a particular version of the Christian faith or any other version of any other faith for that matter. These ideas are trying to get us to the point where we see the inherent value and worth in ourselves and in others. And in seeing that, we begin treating ourselves and others differently, which in turn, over time, changes our world. We are not doomed. We have so much hope ahead of us but we have to dig for it beneath the layers of the surface conscious life. It's not found out here. In fact, out here can be pretty discouraging at times, but what is in here never changes. It never has. We've always been this, but do we recognize it? Jesus said it this way, no one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lamp stand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your father in heaven. In interpersonal conflict, this way of looking at ourselves and others can become very useful. When we are arguing with someone or having a disagreement with someone, it is usually with their outer self, their opinions, their judgments, and ours that clash with theirs. But if both in that conflict can learn to look deeper into one another, 
and realize that it is the very same God in each of us that is keeping us alive, that is making us conscious, conscious, making us sentient. If we can look at that and focus on that, it takes some of the edge off of the conflict and it makes it easier to find resolution. I was just having a conversation with someone in my office this week who had a particularly heated moment of contact, uh, of conflict with someone. And we were talking about this very topic, about how we have to see God in others and acknowledge God in ourselves. It's almost as if we need to, in those moments, think, the thing that I worship, the thing that I have devoted my life to, is the very thing in them that is allowing them to sit here. And even though I don't like the words that are coming out of their mouth, I can look deeper. I can choose to focus on who they really are. You have a lamp. You have a light. You are a lamp. You are a light. It is what you really are and what everyone around you that you interact with is. So may we acknowledge that and may we shine. I want to invite you to spend a few moments now reflecting on this lesson that is a hopeful one, but also a difficult one in many ways because it asks us to look deeper. As we spend a few moments now looking deeper, just being silent, being still, taking an inner inventory of ourselves and finding that lamp and finding that light deep within us. Let us consider how this might change the ways that we interact with the world in the coming week. Also, if you would like to receive the Eucharist communion with us at this time from wherever you're watching, we invite you to do that. If you don't happen to have unleavened bread and wine in your proximity, whatever you have available is sufficient. But let's spend a few moments now reflecting on this challenging, yes, but deeply hopeful lesson from the scriptures. Amen.